Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Loyola Academy Virtual College Fair. We have a great evening and, and group of presenters lined up for you this evening. So we know this is a really exciting time as you're navigating your college search process. And so we're excited to share some, some helpful information with you this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. First, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. If for some reason you can't, just send us a message using that Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to drop those in that Q&A box at any point. You can do it before that college is presenting, while they're presenting, or after. We'll all be monitoring those questions throughout the whole session and are happy to answer those for you. Um, don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered today. So um, check that StriveScan website where you signed up for additional sessions you might be interested in after this one. And then um, this session, along with all the others, are being recorded and will be available on that same StriveScan website as well within about a week. So before I turn it over to our presenters, I want to show you what our schedule looks like for tonight. Um, we have six colleges and universities scheduled to present tonight. Um, so first we have the University of Glasgow, University College Dublin, Asade Business and Law School hasn't been able to join us yet, but I hope we're hoping that they will still hop on here in a few minutes. Baylor University, Southern Methodist University, and Texas Christian University. So that is our plan for tonight. So with that, I will turn it over to Jay from University of Glasgow. All right, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Tyler. I'm just gonna share my screen here. All right, give me one second. Okay, this should be working. Hi everyone, my name is Jay Shamlin. I am with the University of Glasgow. I'm one of our senior international officers. I am based in Chicago, Illinois. I'm from Glencoe, Illinois. I know Loyola very well, so it's great to be back in some familiar territory. And I recruit students from the Northeast and Midwest for a study abroad, for postgraduate, for undergraduate. But today we're going to be talking a little bit about undergraduate. Just to let you guys know, if you scan the QR code on the bottom of any of the slides, you should be able to get onto our mailing list. We are not like the United States, where we buy names for the SAT. You have to opt in due to, due to GDPR compliance. So please, if you're interested in hearing about from Glasgow, please scan that with your phone, and we can continue on. So the University of Glasgow was founded in 1451, and we're an ancient Scottish university, and we're actually the fourth oldest English-speaking university in the entire world behind Oxford, Cambridge, and St. Andrews. So a lot of history here. We have about 30,000 students from over 140 different countries, which equates to about half Scottish students and half international students. But we're only 2% U.S. So I would say of that 30,000 students that are doing a uh, degree from, from North America, under 1,000 students. So you really are going to truly feel like an international student when you have the University of Glasgow. Ranked 67th in QS World Rankings, 29th most inter international university in the world, or 14th in the UK. So I could go on and on with some accolades as I continue on. Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world in 2019. And that's what I love about Scotland. This is a photo of Loch Lomond. Uh, locks are lakes in, in Scotland. Um, and this is about 35 minutes out from campus. So it's great that, you know, many people think of Scotland as the lush rolling hills and how absolutely the picturesque the views are, as you can see here. But we are located in Glasgow, which is actually the largest city in Scotland at about 985,000 people. Many people think Edinburgh is, and that is false. Edinburgh is just the capital, but it is smaller at about 650,000 people. And Scotland as a country is only 5 million people, where fun fact, there are more sheep than there are people. Um, but you are going to be in the largest city, which is from Chicago. You're kind of used to that being that, in that kind of that larger city environment. Um, but you'll see we're uh, fourth in, uh, fourth largest in the UK, second for shopping, the height. We're actually a UNESCO city of music, which means we have 200 live music events a week pre-COVID. So there really is a passion for the arts and uh, just music and just a lot, and a lot of liveliness going on in downtown Glasgow. Um, but we're actually located in Glasgow's West End. So it's very similar to if you've ever been, if you've been to, you know, the Cub Stadium, how we're, I was about 20 minutes from downtown, the Loop. That's probably pretty much the same thing. Um, we're in the West End is what it's called. And my favorite part of the West End is actually the photo on the screen. This is known as Ashton Lane. Ashton Lane is, a, is a, as you can see, a pedestrian-only street. And there's restaurants, shops, and movie theater, pubs. And it's just kind of a great place. And it's literally right behind our geology building. And I love the fact that if you want to go and just kind of get a pint uh, and grab uh, with your friend and just kind of just be in Glasgow, it really is a great uh, area. And it's where the university is located. Now, speaking of the university, here is a fantastic aerial shot of school. I'm sure the first thing that pops out to you is going to be 
our main building. The main building was designed by Sir George in the 1800s. It's just called the main building. There is no fancy name for it. In this building will be pretty much our Adam Smith School for Business. Fun fact, Adam Smith, who is the founder of Modern Day Economics, went to Glasgow, so business is very popular. We have uh, international relations will be in here, a lot of humanities courses, psychology, tons of lecture halls and professor's offices. There's a gift shop, there's an eating area. So trust me, you will go in this building at some point at Glasgow while you're there. 13 story library, great place to study. Um, on the top floor is something, something called special collections where if you wanna you know, be able to handle one of Shakespeare's manuscripts or see some really iconic pieces that are that are loaned to, but to the Glasgow Library, it's a great place to go. And it has a great view of the, of the campus from uh, the 13th floor. But you all will spend most of your time in the Frazier Building. This is our student resource building, international student support visas, everything in this building. So on the four, fourth floor will be one of our dining hall options. In the United Kingdom, the dining system is a little bit different. There is no getting one swipe card or a certain amount of meals every week. It's going to be known as self-catered, which means you cater for yourself, which means you live in more of a flat-style residence hall. Uh, you'll have your own room, uh, and then there's a shower, and then there's showers and bathrooms in the hall, and a common area kitchen, and a common area hangout. So very much like living in an apartment, essentially. Um, and then on the third story will be our Office of International Student Support and our Bursar's office, or paying for school or study abroad office. That's all on the third floor. And then the second floor is going to be our bookstore and also is going to be the doctor's office. Now, we have over 500 different program combinations at the University of Glasgow. Another fun fact about the UK is that all of our majors are double, our, all of our majors and double majors are already preset. So if you want to go into business and you want to double major business, I can tell you there's only 34 other programs that you can double major in this business. And that's all listed online. The only thing that we do not offer at University of Glasgow, I would say, is going to be anything fine art related. So performing arts, visual arts, anything with that, then you're going to want to go to the Glasgow School of Art, which is 10 minutes from school. Now, another thing about the United Kingdom that you might have heard is that you have to know what you want to study, which is, which is kind of true. We are looking for students who want to take more classes within their desired field. As you can see here, this is a physics major. Um, and think of chemistry, astronomy as their first, as they're kind of like their minors during the first two years. And then in year two, the student chose not to bring down uh, uh, chemistry with uh, physics. And then the student chose to do physics for their final year. But if they wanted to switch to chemistry, they could have, because you can see here, they took level one and level two, or they could have brought down chemistry and been a double major because, again, they already took the prerequisites for level one, level two. So, again, the UK is designed for a student where you're not going to be doing your first two years of gen end requirements and then deciding your major. Instead, you come in declared and you take more of the classes in that particular field. Now, entry requirements are looking for at least a 1280 SAT or 27 ACT and then two AP exams of the four above and relevant fields. Again, the UK is going to be a bit more test heavy, so that is something that you probably have heard and is very true. But for this incoming class coming up, we are going to be test optional where we require at least a 3.5 minimum unweighted GPA and then honors and AP coursework and with dual enrollment in that in your particular field. But again, if you want more information, please feel free to shoot a contact to me. And the last slide is talking about um, uh, where tuition starts at 25K a year. There's three U.S.-based officers. I am your international officer, so if you have any questions, please feel free to take either photo of my email or, again, scan the QR code. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. Okay, next up, we are going to University College Dublin. Great. Thank you. Let me just share my screen right now. Um, all right, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll just jump across the water from Glasgow to Dublin. Um, my name is Brandy Troy, and I am here to talk about University College Dublin, also called UCD for short. And UCD is Ireland's largest and most international university. We are home to over 18,000 undergraduate students, 25% of whom hail from outside of Ireland, just like all of you. Um, UCD is ranked the number one in Ireland by US News and World Report, so we're very proud of that. We are also in the top 1% of higher education institutions worldwide. So when you get your degree with UCD, you will get a degree that is internationally ranked and internationally accredited that you'll be able to bring with you anywhere in the world. All right, great. So first off, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Emerald Isle, um, what it's like to live, study, and travel in Ireland. So in my very biased opinion, um, Ireland is just the best country in which to attend college. It is the only English speaking member of the European Union and this offers a really great gateway to the rest of Europe for American students. Ireland is routinely voted one of the safest, safest, one of the happiest and one of the friendliest countries in the world. 
The scenery is just breathtaking. I cannot understate that. And the entire country is about the size of Illinois, so it makes it really easy to travel around. UCD is located in the heart of Ireland's capital city, and Dublin has one of the youngest populations in Europe. So it's a really great student city with something always going on. There's gonna be a million students your age walking around, going to pubs, enjoying all the sights, and really just taking in everything that Dublin has to offer. Additionally, Dublin is considered the Silicon Valley of Europe. So it hosts a lot of the European headquarters for some of America's largest industries. And UCD fosters many connections with companies such as Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Pfizer right next to campus. We also have a very dedicated career network to help you find employment in the field that you love right after graduation. And Dublin is just the perfect springboard on which to do that. So this is UCD's main campus and behind me, but uh, we offer state-of-the-art learning and living facilities right near the bustling city center and Ireland's major business hubs. UCD does, is a modern campus built on tradition. And what I mean by this is that our buildings, our research institutions and our resources are constantly updated to offer you the best possible learning environment. But at the same time, UCD has a unique and impactful history wherein the college played a huge role in the establishment of Ireland as an independent nation. And we have educated over half of Ireland's prime ministers. So there's a lot of history on campus but at the same time, we're still building brand new research centers and accommodation halls. Great, um, just a little bit more about our campus. We are very similar to a traditional US college campus with all of the amenities that we offer. UCD actually has Europe's largest urban campus. So it's pretty unique that we are in the heart of an international city, but at the same time, we have this really great community and UCD center just for our students. We offer academic supports, including libraries throughout campus dedicated to different academic disciplines, student advisors, and math and writing centers. Additionally, we offer personal support in the way of peer mentorship, student health and counseling services, and a wellness text line. We do have over 160 clubs and societies, so you can see a few of them here, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Um, UCD does guarantee on-campus accommodation for incoming international students, and we have rooms for over 3,000 students on campus, each of them in an apartment-style setup with your own private bedroom and a shared kitchen and bathroom with maybe four or five other students. Um, our buildings are very modern. We're actually building another 1,000 rooms for next fall by the time all of you start, so very exciting, and you can see the virtual tours of each of our uh, buildings online. Um, all right, so we do offer over 70 undergraduate programs, including the liberal arts and sciences pathway and direct entry. So the two pathways to a degree, um, most of them are direct entry, offering three or four year bachelor's degrees or a five year combined master's degree. And this means that you can start studying your degree right away without having to take any general education requirements, saving you a lot of time and money. Um, however, if you're like me and you're 17 years old and you have no idea what you want to do, that's okay too. We offer a liberal arts and sciences pathway with a bigger degree of flexibility. So that's a, your standard four-year degree modeled off the American system. So applying to UCD is fairly simple. We have fairly transparent entry requirements on our website. You can log on to ucd.ie slash global to see the exact requirements for your chosen major. And you can apply at UCD or through the common application. Um, one thing to note is that when applying to UCD, you will apply to a specific major. And in this way, we differ from American institutions. So applications for the 2021 school year are now open and rolling into the summer. Um, I often hear people worrying about the price tag of studying abroad. And honestly, it's very price comparable to a US university. Over 80% of our international students do receive a scholarship from UCD. Additionally, we accept the FAFSA, federal loans, private loans, and the GI Bill. So I really recommend you apply early. You can apply to up to four different courses. So if you don't know exactly what you want to major in, there's still time to decide. If you'd like to learn more, please reach out to me or visit our website. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, next up, we are going to Baylor University. All right, um, let me get my screen. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Let's 
slideshow from the beginning. Awesome. Um, all right, guys. Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Edion. Um, I'm one of the admissions counselors at Baylor University. Um, and so we're leaving the great country of, Europe, of Ireland to the great country of Texas. Um, and so um, a little bit about Baylor University um, is we are located in Waco, Texas. Um, for you guys that aren't too familiar with Texas, um, it's essentially located between Dallas and Austin. It's about an hour and a half in either direction. It's a mid-sized city, so it's not Chicago, it's not Houston, but it's not a tiny town either. So there's definitely a lot happening um, for, for you moms out there. There's definitely a lot with the Magnolia silos to come explore. Um, and it really fits to who we are as an institution with Waco. Um, it's a um, because we are a mid-sized university as well. Uh, we have a little over 14,000 undergrads, um, about 18,000 total students. And that um, that's that includes students from all 50 states and about 92 different countries. So you're going to have a very diversified campus feel when you're on campus. Um, so not too far from where you guys are right now here in Chicago. Um, in terms of a little bit about academics, um, we have over 140 different programs and majors for students to, um, to study. And what's nice is that when you're applying to Baylor, you're applying to it as a whole. Um, and so whether if you decide that you wanna be biology or chemistry or history or business, whatever it is, you are able to change your major even before you get to Baylor. There are some exceptions like aviation sciences, um, music, theater, those you, there are separate applications that you have to um, apply to, but otherwise you're applying to the university as a whole. Some of our top programs will include things like biology like and basically anything in the health sciences. Our Baylor Science Building is enormous. Um, if you guys have been to a Bass Pro Shop, um, it's about two of those. Um, there's over 100 research labs on the third floor for students to do um, research throughout their four years. Um, when students are on the pre-med track, uh, we have about a 72% acceptance rate into medical schools across the country. Um, so it is a very successful program that are for students that are trying to go into medical school. Um, some other um, notable programs are anything in business, especially like for uh, entrepreneurship. That's a really, really strong program. Uh, it's been in the top five over the last several years. Um, and we were one of the first universities in the country to have entrepreneurship as a major. And we have a 100% job placement rate, rate with entrepreneurship as a major. Um, um, and so that's a really fantastic uh, program. Anything with engineering, we have mechanical, electrical engineering, and then we have the four concentrations of uh, biomedical, humanitarian, geopetrol, and environmental. Um, so there's four different uh, concentrations in the engineering program as well. Um, even though we have a little over 14,000 undergrads, we really like having a similar style that you're having at Loyola in terms of learning environment. Um, with our average class size of 26, with our student to faculty ratio of 14 to one, this really allows you to form bonds with your faculty, with your professors um, throughout your time at Baylor. And so you're not gonna be in a class of 300 students. Um, and so it's gonna be really personalized for students but still meeting people from all over the place, which is really beneficial for, for our students. Um, all faculty members are required to have office hours throughout the week. So you're able to meet with them. If you're ever ha struggling in a class, you need extra assistance on whatever it is, you're able to do that as well um, with our faculty members. So. Um, in terms of traditions, um, we have a ton of them. We are the oldest um, continuous university in the state of Texas, um, and we've been around since 1845. And so with that comes a lot of different traditions. Um, so one of, one of the, a few of the big ones that I really like to talk about are uh, homecoming. We have the oldest and largest homecoming parade in the country, sorry, back in 1909. So it's a really, really massive event that happens every single fall. Um, the Baylor line is a really, really fun one where you guys are going to get gold jerseys and on the back is going to be your name and the year that you graduate from Baylor and then during every football home game every freshman is allowed to rush the football field and create a tunnel for the football players to run through. Um, Christmas on 5th is another really big one that we have right before the holidays. Um, I know for you guys snow is not really that exciting but Texans love it um, and so we have like an outdoor musical concert and the fake snow and everything like that that's going to be happening for uh, um, for our students and the Waco community as well. Um, so definitely very engaging community when you're going to be on the Baylor campus. 
Um, in terms of the community as a whole, um, yes, we are an apologetically Christian. Does that mean you have to be Christian to attend Baylor? No, um, but but it is something that is going to be part of our um, kind of the four-year experience that you're going to have at Baylor. We require two Christian courses as well as one year of chapel, Mondays and Wednesdays that you're going to be doing. Um, and and that'll, that'll kind of encompass everything that's going to be required. In terms of diversity, that's a really big part of who we are as well. A little under 40%, about 38% of our students are coming from an ethnic minority background. We have a lot of different multicultural organizations on campus. They put on a lot of different events. So they'll bring speakers, um, performances, all those different things to really help students kind of get to know other st other students from other different cultures. As a whole, we have over 330 different clubs and organizations for students to be a part of. So lots of ways that our students are getting involved on campus, and that's going to be a really big part. And something that we're really going to be pushing is for students to have that community sense on campus. Um, in terms of sports, we are part of the Big 12 Conference, um, Division One sports, basketball, football, baseball, equestrian, and all those different kinds of sports as well. Um, um, in terms of the application, there's three ways that you guys can apply. Go Baylor, Common App, or Apply Texas. November is going to be our early action, early decision one deadline. And then February 1st will be early decision and regular admissions. Um, these are just some of the required items as well as recommended items. Um, here's some deadlines, like I mentioned about the November 2nd, um, February 1st. Some scholarship programs, always feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any questions about scholarship programs. These are ones that you can apply for once you get, um, as if you're applying early for, for programs. So kind of go over a little bit of um, financial aid um, later. And then, yeah, reach out to me if you guys have any questions. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and I'll pass, on, pass it on to TC, SMU. <laughs> Awesome, thank you so much. Um, for to our students, if you have any questions so far, feel free to drop those in the Q&A. We'd be happy to answer those questions. And uh, like he said, we will pass it over to Allie with Southern Methodist University. All righty, thank y'all so much. I think I got it figured out. I've got multiple screens here, so sometimes that's a bit of a challenge, but um, thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. My name is Allie Homan, and I am one of the assistant directors in the Office of Undergraduate Admission here at SMU, and I work with students from the North Shore area, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to share more about SMU with you this evening. And while this will be a very broad view look at the university, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat or connect with me after tonight. So let's get started. So just trying to set the stage here and make us feel like we're on campus, here is a bird's eye view of our campus. We consider ourselves a mid-sized private university located in the heart of Dallas in a residential pocket called the Park Cities. We're just about 10 minutes from downtown Dallas, so I like to think that we offer our students kind of the best of both worlds in the fact that we're located in a large metropolitan city, but we're kind of tucked away in a nice little residential pocket. We have about 6,400 undergraduate students and about 11,000 students, 11, students total, including graduate students, so kind of that perfect size. Not so big you're going to be lost in a crowd, but not so small you don't have big school opportunities. Average class size is gonna be about 22. So you'll have professors that know you by name, but then we also have D1 athletics. So you do get that big school camaraderie that comes along with having those D1 sports. We have five undergraduate schools. So everything ranging from liberal arts and sciences to business, engineering, performing and visual arts and kind of everything in between. So for the most part, when you're applying to SMU, you're just going to be applying to the university in and of itself. There are a couple of exceptions to the rule and I'll go through those in just a moment, but um, for the most part, you're not applying to any one particular undergraduate program or major. You still have plenty of time to figure that out once you get to SMU um, to figure out exactly what you wanna study and major in. When you get to SMU, you'll start taking classes under our common curriculum, which is kind of our liberal arts backbone that everybody must participate in in order to graduate from the university. In addition to the common curriculum courses that you're taking in those first couple of semesters, you'll also be adding one or two additional courses in that preferred area of study just to get your feet wet and see if it's something that you enjoy and want to continue and major in um, before diving totally into that program. We really encourage cross-disciplinary studies. We want to make sure that you're able to pursue all of the areas that you are interested in while still graduating in four years. So that's why you'll find many of our students are double majoring, having a major and a minor, multiple minors, adding a pre-professional track and so on. I did mention um, this 
some exceptions to the rule in terms of applying to the university as a whole. Um, and those majors that you apply to directly are going to be business and performing and visual arts. So if you're interested in either of those programs, those two programs are um, you will apply to directly with just indicating one of those majors as your preferred area of study on your application and you'll be reviewed for those programs um, at the same time as your admissions. Other than that, you're just applying to the university and you'll start taking those classes once you get here. Switching gears just slightly, we're gonna start briefly talking about student life. And so there's a lot to unpack here and I'm just going to scratch the surface, but there's always something going on on campus. There's really no reason to ever be bored outside of the classroom. We have 200 plus student organizations so everything ranging from student government to Greek life to community service, intramurals, you name it, we have it. Our students are typically involved in multiple things across campus, so there's tons to choose from. Like I mentioned before, we are Division I, so you can go to all of our home football games with just a swipe of your student ID. There's a lot of school spirit here at SMU, and our students are always excited to support the Mustang. One of my favorite SME traditions is what we call boulevarding, and it's basically our version of tailgating that happens before all of our home football games. The entire SMU community comes together on our main quad on campus that we call the boulevard, and then during the game, anytime we score a touchdown, our live mascot, Karuna, a small black Shetland pony, we are the Mustangs, I know it makes a lot of sense, runs across this runs across the field. So over the last several years, Karuna has gotten a really good workout during football season. So which is really exciting. If you follow college sports or know anything about our history in football, it's kind of a big deal for us. So another component to the overall SME experience that I'd like to just touch on is our living model on campus, which is called the residential commons. They are much more than just the dorms. They're living learning environments. There's a classroom in each of them. There's a faculty and residence in each of them as well. So um, it's not like mom and dad checking in on your every move. You don't have to sign in and sign out. You can come and go as you please. But the faculty and residence is a full-time faculty member that lives in a first floor apartment that is attached to but separate from the commons. And they're there to support you and create your home away from home for the next four years. You're placed into a commons, you don't get to pick your commons, but everybody thinks their commons is the best commons and you really can't go wrong. They all have their own personalities and traditions and you're required to live in that commons for your first two years with, with the option to stay on for the full four if you'd like. Although you cannot pick a specific commons, you can pick a roommate or make some preferences in terms of suite style or community style depending on what you'd like. So just a little bit about the student experience. To wrap things up, I just want to quickly touch on some highlights for the in admissions information. I know that you guys have great college counselors, so I don't need to dive too deep into this, but just some things that are specific to SMU. We have both early action and early decision within our first deadline, November 1st, and then regular decision and early decision too within our second deadline, January 15th. We are on the Common App, so that's easiest for y'all. That is great for us. Um, it's by far the most common application that I come across that comes across my desk, but we do have several others if you prefer those. We read all of our applications holistically, so we're looking at everything that you submit to us. And additionally, you're fully considered for all of our academic scholarships with just that application to the university. So one other highlight for this upcoming year is we've decided that um, we are going to continue with our test optional policy for the next application cycle. So um, if you're proud of your test scores, you've been able to take a test, that's great. But if not, then don't, no need to send those. So, I think I am close to my allotted time. So I just wanna thank you for joining us this evening. I look forward to working with you and please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. Pony up. Awesome, thank you, Allie. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we have Jill from Texas Christian University. Hi everybody, let me get my screen up and running here. I think this is my screen, let's see. All right, really excited to be here tonight, you guys. Um, I love your school. Over the last five years, we've had well over 300 students apply to TCU. So thanks for your interest, keep it coming. I am a local representative. I actually live in McHenry County. So I'm a little farther out from the Chicago area, but I live here and I'm, I'm here so that I can answer your questions. Um, my name is Jill, as I said, please feel free to reach out to me. I will pop this information into the, the chat feature at the end of my session tonight. 
TCU is a private medium-sized university. We have under 10,000 undergraduate students. We are predominantly undergraduate. We have only about 1,000 graduate students. So undergraduates really rule the roost at TCU. Um, our largest group of students in the United States come from Texas, followed by California, and then look at Illinois. Illinois has represents the, the third largest group of students on our campus. We are affiliated with the Disciples of Christ. The Disciples of Christ is a Protestant denomination that is nicknamed the DOC or the Christian Church denomination. So our title, Texas Christian University, is a denominational reference. However, we have students from over 60 different faith backgrounds. Um, we offer over 25 different faith-based organizations on our campus. And students come from all over, though, with a lot of different faith backgrounds or lack thereof. And we require one religion class as part of our core curriculum at TCU within your four years. We're located in Fort Worth, Texas. So with three schools from Texas presenting tonight, you got to see a little bit of Waco, a little bit of Dallas, and now Fort Worth, which is nicknamed Cowtown. Um, Fort Worth is actually a lot bigger city than students often think. We're the 13th largest city in the U.S. So to put that into some perspective for you, um, since you live in Illinois, Fort Worth is larger than Milwaukee. We're larger than Indianapolis. We're even larger than Minneapolis and St. Paul pushed together. We're smaller than Dallas, but we're bigger than Waco, and it's a perfect size for you to have your internships, uh, volunteer experiences, and just have some fun while you're in college. We have a very active um, community on our campus. Fantastic fine arts programs. You get in free to all of our fine art programs. Um, athletics, we're division one. We're part of the Big 12 Athletic Conference. We're actually the smallest school in the Big 12. So it's kind of funny when we're playing, you know, that burnt orange school. We're, because you think about us as the small school, it's really a David versus Goliath matchup. Our students get in free to all home athletic events at TCU. Just walk over and they scan your ID and boom, you're in. We have over 300 clubs and organizations at the university. We have a really active Greek life um, program at TCU. I'd say probably about 50% of our students are involved in sororities or fraternities, but 50% are not. And we do have a, a Christian sorority and a Christian fraternity as well. And then our students love to volunteer. A special thing about TCU is um, we make it feel like home. Our residence halls have actually been ranked number four in the nation by the Princeton Review. Um, this is an example of just one of our residence halls, but I love how you can see that it's really well lit, the entryway, the path leading up to these residence halls, and it's daylight, and that they're still well, really well lit. We have a strong learning community. So while we're medium sized with a lot of big school type of options, in the classroom, we try to, try to create, keep it really small. For every 13 full-time students, there's a full-time faculty member. And if you include people like me, I know I'm just an admission counselor, but if you include our staff, like the chancellor or somebody who's uh, you know the director of one of the residence halls and our faculty, for every 4.5 undergraduate students, we have one person like me who wants to help you. Average class size is about 27 students in a class. We offer over 132 different areas of study. 115 of those areas actually offer full majors. So everything from ballet and modern dance to ranch management, um, education, and even nursing and, and pre-health uh, programs. Regardless of what your major is at TCU, all of our students take that core curriculum. The core curriculum is kind of our general education requirement, if you will. During your four years at TCU, about one third of your classes will be classes toward your major. Another one third of your classes would be classes toward your major and maybe a double major or a major and a minor. And then the final one third will be classes toward that core curriculum. There are four applications that we accept, the TCU application, the common application. We're in Texas, so we're part of Apply Texas. And then we just joined the coalition application this past year. The most common for Loyola students would be the TCU application or the common application, but we're happy to receive any of these. We do offer two different deadlines with November 1st being both early decision binding as well as early action non-binding and then regular decision that deadline's February 1st.
We are test optional again for next year and the following year. Um, like other people have mentioned, if you do take the exam and you feel really proud of your exam scores, feel free to send them to us. Um, and if you do send them to us because you're really proud of them, but as your admission counselor, I look at them and I'm like, oh, wow, I think maybe, uh, Maybe, maybe they're not strong enough. We have a do no harm policy. I'll just pretend like I didn't see them. We have a holistic review process. Our tuition and fees for this next year are located above. And I see our moderator's face popping up. So I think that means my six minutes are over. I'll put my information in the chat feature, you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for looking. Awesome, thank you, Jill. Okay, well, that is the end of our formal presentations. We have a few extra minutes in our session, so I'm going to ask all of our presenters, if you want to come back, turn on your, your videos, unmute yourselves. Um, we're going to go through a little bit of Q&A here at the end. Students, if you have questions for um, a particular college or all the colleges together, feel free to start dropping those in the Q&A, and we'll be monitoring those as we um, answer some questions for you live on screen. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. The first question for each of you is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And so we will go in the same order you presented in originally and start with today. Hey, I think the best advice that you could do for your college search process is to just keep a really wide range. You know, for example, being at a national university, never would have thought about going to school internationally. Uh, and now I tell students that it's the best decision you could possibly make. So if you're interested in possibly going nationally, it definitely is a possibility. But again, keep your interests open, look at small, look at big, look at close to home, look at far away. And I think you'll be really surprised at what you end up choosing. Um, yeah, I definitely echo what Jay said. Make sure that you go into this college search with an open mind. Don't just apply to the places that your friends are applying to or that you know people from your school have applied to. And definitely utilize us. You know, if you even are a little bit uh, curious about one of these schools, reach out to us and we're happy to talk you through it and explain the different programs. So yeah, along with that is definitely reaching out to us. Um, one thing I always tell students is really research your the the program of your interests. Like so, for example, at Baylor, we don't have anything to do with architecture. So if you're interested and you're you really want to be an architect, we're not the school for you. Um, so really start looking into like what it is that you're wanting to study. It's okay if you don't know, and that's totally fine. But if you have something in mind, make sure the schools you're applying to do have the majors available. And my piece of advice is pretty simple, but start early and be organized. I think keeping, you know, detailed, I don't know, spreadsheets, notes, whatever, however you keep yourself organized with all the deadlines, um, programs that schools offer, all of those things, put all of our contact information at the end of that spreadsheet. So if you ever have a question, you just quickly get that email and fire it off. So um, I think that those two tips are um, very beneficial in being able to have a successful college search process. I'm so glad that we're talking about this um, topic because I really think, you know, it's quite a distance from Illinois down to Texas, but after the pandemic, so many colleges have put a lot of information out on their website. So this is a great time to dig in and, and research information. So that way, when you do talk with your admission counselor or come down to campus to visit, you already have a great information foundation to build upon. Awesome. Okay, our next question is what advice, or no, I'm sorry, we just did that one. What is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? Same thing, we'll kick it over to Jay to start. So, yeah, so I would say that there's a, at the University of Glasgow, that big main building that I was talking about earlier, there are four quadrants of pristine grass that if you touch it, you will not graduate. That is the big, uh, you know, rumor mill around the, the university. I, of course, have stepped on it just because I wanted to be like, I'm 30 and I'm not going back to school. Um, but I will say it, it, it you know, no, it, there's benches and stuff to hang out there, but it is that if you cross one of those four pieces of grass, you will not graduate on time, so. That's great. Um... I would say this isn't specifically a UCD tradition, but it's something almost all of our students do is just traveling. Um, 
something that almost all of our students will go different places on the weekends or on spring break. Um, I know when I studied abroad at UCD, I went to Paris for spring break for just about two hundred dollars. So it's a it's a really nice uh, opportunity that you get when you go to school overseas. So I talked about some of our traditions like homecoming and the Baylor line and Christmas on fifth, but my favorite um, is definitely Dr. Pepper hour. Um, so Dr. Pepper was founded in Waco. Um, so every single Tuesday from three to four, we have free Dr. Pepper floats for all of our faculty, staff and students. They're delicious. So I recommend to come down and, and check them out. sounds like a good one. Um, so I know that I mentioned my favorite tradition during my six minute spiel, which is boulevarding our version of tailgating before all of our home football games, which just brings the entire SMU community together. Current students, alumni, faculty, staff, just community members all come and gather on my Zoom background back here on the boulevard. Um, big white tents. It's just a huge party out on the main quad um, before the game. And then we all go to the game and support the Mustang. So that's my favorite SME tradition. Gosh, we have a lot of traditions at TCU, but um, one of my favorites is um, we have several horned frog statues on our campus. And one of the horned frog statues, legend has it that if you rub his nose, your wish will come true. And I rubbed it while I was on my campus tour when I interviewed for my job. And I've been here 17 years. So rub the horned frog statue's nose, it works. That's awesome. Okay, last question for this evening is give us an interesting or fun fact about your school that you haven't shared already that you'd like to leave us with. Um, um, wow, I, I've said a lot of, we have a lot of history, but I think um, that the founder of the television went to the University of Glasgow, Lord Kelvin, so degrees Celsius, uh, he went to the University of Glasgow. Um, there's a ton and ton of history of Glasgow, if you look it up again, being the fourth oldest English speaking university in the whole world. So definitely, if you like history and that, and that you know, just a lot of history, then you're going to love it going to school in Scotland. One fun fact about UCD is that our campus was actually one of the headquarters for the Irish Rebellion over 100 years ago when we finally separated from the UK. No offense, Jay, but it's very exciting walking around campus and seeing where all the rebels were meeting up and planning their war. <laughs> so one of mine, um, I'm kind of kind of piggybacking off what Ali mentioned earlier. Um, so we don't do tailgating at Baylor. Um, we do sailgating um, because we have the Brazos River that runs right along our football stadium. Um, and so we have boats that are set up for our students pre-COVID. Um, hopefully we can get back to that whole situation again um, in the future, but it's definitely a really, really good time. Um, and so, yeah. Well, mine is a little different and, and it is probably something you don't know, but we actually have a full blown art museum, like a legit art museum that kids take for field trips on our campus called the Meadows Museum. And it actually houses the largest collection of Spanish art outside of Spain. So definitely check that out on campus. SME students can go with just their student ID. We do have passes in our office as well. So if you visit and you'd like to visit the Meadows Media Museum, definitely let us know, we'll give you some of those. Well, you guys probably already know this, but I still think it's really unique. We are the only university in the, in, in the entire world with the horned frog as a mascot. And I tried to find my little horned frog who's on my desk and I can't find him, the like real replica, but this is my bobblehead. And uh, so it looks like the space alien form of a horned frog, but we love all things froggy at TCU and we're the only horned frogs. Come be a frog with us. Very cool. Okay, well, thank you all so much for sharing and presenting. We appreciate your time. To our students, thank you so much for joining us this evening as well. Um, when you close your Zoom session, there will be a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind completing that, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered uh, this evening. So check Fast Drive Scan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in. Um, and that is also where you will find the recordings in about a week or so. So like I said, if you have any questions, let us know and we will see you in the next session.